Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking up the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Yeah, you have been? No, you have been. Okay, well, we're going to start our children's message with singing happy birthday. Uh, Bob's, <laughs> the Bob's had birthdays. Uh, Bob Baldwin's 92. And um, Rick Lowen had a birthday. And I know Phyllis is coming up. And Olivia and uh, Xander are within these weeks. So let's sing happy mm -hmm. birthday to our August birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to everyone. Happy birthday to you. Okay. Well, good morning. Grace and peace to you from God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who comes to us in the baptisms of our life. Amen. Today, we're blessed to have a baptism of Aidan Marshall. We're very excited about that. And a few minutes after the, after the sermon, uh, we'll, ha we'll have that rite of baptism. And this is a time for us, Bethany Lutheran Church, to come together as a community of faith to celebrate this sacrament of baptism and to celebrate with Aiden. We also need to remember that we, too, are going to be making promises. We, too, are going to be remembering our promises as a community of faith. We have made promises, we will make promises to Aiden, and we have made promises to those who have gone before him about raising up a faithful human in the best of our ability. So we need to remember that we have promised to be the community of faith and that we are a part of everyone's faith journey. And it is our promise to God that we will raise up faithful people. We do that in certain ways. We promise to teach the Lord's Prayer. We promise to teach the Ten Commandments. Uh, in the Lutheran Church, we promise to teach the small catechism. And we promise to put the scripture into your hands, into the hands of the people of faith. And so there will be a part of this rite of baptism where the community of faith members I'll remember your baptisms and the promises that have been made to you. Now, Christian churches everywhere differ on theology, and we differ on which books of the Bible to bring forth, and we differ on love of God versus fear of the devil, and we differ on preaching fire and brimstone or grace and love. And just in case you are new here, this is a church based on grace and the love of Christ. And we teach that you are the light of Christ. 
We also differ widely on communion. We differ on how it is taken and its meaning overall. And in case you are unsure, this is a church that holds communion as sacred, and it's one of two sacraments in the Lutheran church. But when it comes to baptism, there is no church or church denomination that I know of that does not have a place for baptism as a very important event in the life of faith. Now, some churches use a font like we do, and some a trough, and some a pool, and some bring you to the river. But baptism is very emphasized in the Bible, and we are all really, we all really need to know that Jesus was baptized, and thus we are baptized with him. And we become a part of that. And what is that, you ask? That is Jesus. Not just Jesus' baptism, but yes, that too, but all of Jesus. We are baptized into Jesus' life, promises, and also his suffering and his death. And most especially, we are baptized into new life, raised from the dead, victorious over sin, death, and the devil, and we too get to participate in the promise of new life. We are given the assurance that after death, there is a resurrection. We get to live as people of faith, as people of hope, as people who know that there is life after where we live now, and that that life is with Jesus and the veil is torn away. These waters flow rich with silts of grace in them. They are filled with the flood and the regeneration, the promise and the demand, the death and rebirth. In them, bodies are washed and souls are illuminated. Wounds are anointed and creeds are recited and our lives are grafted into the vine as branches, as heirs to the promise, and as children of God. Overall, baptism is a one-time event. There are reasons that people get rebaptized, but the waters of grace, they stick, and the promise stays, even if you're baptized only once. The baptized life, however, is a lifetime project. This rite begins here with this sacrament at the font, but it extends into every moment of life. Standing as a promise that is stuck to our bodies, it's stuck to our hearts, and it's stuck to our souls. For in the water, there is new birth and one that is held in the kingdom of God. And with the new birth comes a renaming. And that is the one baptized holds their hands together. And we as a community hold our hands together, and we are all called children of God. That is our new name. Now we falter in that. In our real identities as children of God, we falter. We lean much more into our humanness than into our baptized calling. We have hard times and issues with each other, and we have physical deaths and illnesses and pain, and we mess up all the time. Now, we heard scripture today on the coming to the waters in Isaiah. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. And perhaps it should say, oh, everyone that breathes, come to the waters. The waters are there for all people. We all thirst for love and for acceptance and for community. We also thirst for the spirit, which is beyond the bounds of human thought. So the Holy Spirit is working and puts a font before us and says, come to the waters. Come. Because the waters flow for all. Now, not only has Aiden been instructed on baptism, but we also instructed on communion. 
So in the light of the Lutheran Church, this is considered a First Communion as well as a baptism. It's a big day. So Aiden, we are very excited for you to begin this journey of faith. And we are we all need to stand as witnesses to this day, celebrating with you and remembering our own baptisms in the same celebration. So congratulations, Aiden, on your baptism today. And to all those who make up the community of faith, let us remember our name in the kingdom of God. We are called adopted heirs of Christ. We are called branches grafted in, and God is the gardener, and Jesus is the vine. And we grow not for ourselves, but to reflect Jesus out into the world. We stand as Christ's light, becoming a part of him through our own waters of baptism. But like a river flowing, we know not where one water ends and one begins. And thus we are all a part of the water. And it flows. And because we are all thirsty, and we come thirsty to the waters. So with this, we are allowed to come close to God, and we are allowed to say, Abba, Father. And with this, we give our deepest thanks for the grace that we have been given. So we sit with that for a moment on a most glorious day. Sit with the enormity of what that is, being grafted into the vine. And having the promise of God stick to you forever. And we say, thank you, God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>